The passing of the man considered a brutal dictator offers a glimpse of hope for many Cuban Americans living here in western New York. 7 Eyewitness News reporter Paula Suro has some of their stories tonight. From miles and miles in each direction, there were people in their cars with the Cuban flags, people honking the horn, coming from every direction. The streets were flooded. The streets of Little Havana, Florida, flooded with thousands of people Saturday celebrating Fidel Castro's death. There was a palpable hope that Fidel's death was the fall of a domino, fall of another domino uh, towards the liberation uh, and, and true progression of Cuba. And miles away, here in Buffalo, it's a day Cuban Americans hoped would come soon enough. Uh, at first, it was soothing, then it was, believe it or not, accelerating. And then the next minute, I was crying my head off. Thinking of my parents, thinking of the thousands that were shot. Alicia Granto Estenos left the island at the young age of 14 as part of Operation Peter Pan, where more than 14,000 children were sent from Cuba to the United States unaccompanied in the early 1960s. It was held because it was a very uncertain period. I would wake up at 3, 4 o'clock in the morning every single night, not knowing if I would ever be reunited with my parents again. Those same years, Olga Carman was also traveling to the United States from Cuba. Cuba. This came just months after she says the island had hoped Castro's rise to power would bring positive change to the island. He was the most formidable speaker. And because there had been decades of pathetic dictators who had no ideology, nothing. And while sitting in her home surrounded by photographs that remind her of Cuba, Carmen says she quickly saw the red flags. He tortured people. There were dead people who appeared hanging from lampposts. It was your typical horrific Latin America dictatorship. And may we never live such a day in this country. She's gone back to Cuba a couple of times. It was falling down. People were hopeless. But now that hope has risen. I keep hopeful. It's one more step towards freedom of speech. So I want what I wanted then. I would like them to have what I had and they didn't, but not at the price of lack of freedom. In Buffalo, Paula Suro, 7 Eyewitness News.